Hello and welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton and welcome to another 24-7 news report. I'm Callum and let's get right into this. The first report comes from Fabrizio Romano saying that Everton are willing, or sorry, are working on a deal for Blackburn striker Ben Brereton Diaz. Frank Lampard has decided or has the final decision if he wants him or not. Uh, we ran a poll on the Toffee Blues saying would Everton fans like this and 72% of Evertonians said they would and I am also a part of that bracket. I think Broughton is a fantastic player. I think he's shown that for Chile, he's shown that for Blackburn in 37 appearances, getting 22 goals and three assists. Of course, missing part of the season due to international duty and then also an ankle injury. And in my opinion, if he played all 46 games, I'm saying easily 25, 26 goals, five or six assists. You know, if it wasn't for the ridiculous goal scoring metrics of someone like Mitrovic, Brereton was the standout goal scorer that season. He looked like a, for a period of time he was going to lead Blackburn. Sorry, to a possible automatic promotion back to the Premier League. Unfortunately, things didn't go their way and they ended up finishing eighth in the league. But then we get on to um, Everton are in talks with Manchester United over a move from midfielder James Garner. United value the 21-year-old at around 14 million. That comes from Paddy Boyland off The Athletic. Another one where we put a poll up on Twitter, 67% of Everton fans said, yes, Garner is... I think if we're going to lose players like Alan and stuff like that, he's the perfect midfielder to bring in. Uh, I think the rumour going around is, you know, that it's us and Southampton are racing for Ghana. But Ghana, fantastic at Forest last season, one of the standout players in the promotion campaign. Fantastic range of passing, you know, really comfortable on the ball. The sort of player Everton need in that midfield. I know we've got Alexi Warby, but... And Alex Warby's been fantastic, arguably Everton's the best player right now, but... That final pass is still something he really needs to work on. James Garner is someone who can provide that passing from deep, that link into midfield and attack, instead of you know relying too much on someone like Alexi Warby and the possibility of someone like Warby getting injured because there's just too much pressure on him and he has to do too much on the creative side. Garner is more of a deep lying midfielder, but he can offer those you know can pass into those pockets that maybe someone like Warby can, and there's not many players in our team that can play those line breaking passes in a way that someone like Garner can. Then we get on to the Anthony Gordon saga, starting off with the reports from David Onstein. Anthony Gordon has told Everton and Frank Lampard that he wants to join Chelsea, but there is a reluctance on Everton's behalf because Gordon's exit, there would be little time to source a replacement. Everton want to invest in other positions before the deadline day, with Southampton forward Che Adams being a leading, leading target. Adams is a good player. I think he's shown in Southampton's last game. He knows how to score goals. He's a big physical threat. Scotland international but at the same time, I think there's players who can do what Che Adams do, does to a similar degree. Maybe don't have that Premier League experience, but would cost much less of a price. And we are only signing a backup striker. I can't imagine Che Adams would want to come in as a backup when you know there's a realistic case that he can start games for Southampton and is starting games for Southampton. So I, I don't see Che Adams joining Everton. I don't see Everton paying the money Southampton will want for someone like Che Adams. But as it currently stands, a deal between Everton and Chelsea is not imminent. There is a chance that the deal does not happen before the transfer deadline. To be completely honest with you, you can say that about most transfers when it comes to this time, especially transfers for, you know, a young, talented player like Anthony Gordon. I think it's one of those where I think personally it will happen and I think it's one of those ones where, you know, it's a bit obvious. It's one of those reports that it's just there to be there. I don't think it's really one to take into account. I think I'm going to God will be a Chelsea player at the end of this window. And I think it just depends now on what Everton do to replace him on how it will go. We move on to another report from Fabrizio Romano at that Everton is still not ex accepting Chelsea's bid of 60 million, including add-ons for Gordon. Talks between Everton and Chelsea are going. The structure of the fee is very important. That's... The most important thing, I think we need to try to get as much money up front as possible so then we can go source replacements for Gordon, source a backup striker replacement with as much money as possible, with rumours also going around that all the money from the Gordon deal will be given to Frank Lampard to spend on the squad. Speaking of a possible striker replacement, Everton have demanded that Chelsea offer one of Conor Gallagher or Amanda Breuer on loan to us as part of the Anthony Gordon deal. That would be included in the £60 million deal. I think that's fantastic work from Everton, especially on Breuer's perspective. I'd love to bring in Conor Gallagher, but we bring in Breuer on a loan. We then don't need to source a backup striker until next summer. And we've got a striker who can score goals in the Premier League and is going to improve throughout the Premier League campaign. So I think it's one of those where Broya on loan, along with the £60 million, will be a very smart deal from Everton that will then allow us to go and sign maybe someone like Garner, maybe another winger, possibly help for the wages for another 
Garner that could be coming in from PSG. So I think it's one of those where I think it's very smart for Everton to do that. Is it likely? I don't think so. Maybe we've brought you with the rumours going around that Aubameyang may be joining Chelsea. But Conor Gallagher is one I see as very unlikely. If any of them join us on loan, I think it will be Armando Broya. Paul Joyce also reports that Tottenham have revived their interest in Anthony Gordon, but Chelsea are confident on reaching an agreement. To be honest with you, I wouldn't really look into this. Paul Joyce, very reliable journalist. He's almost definitely right in what he's saying. But at the same time, I think it's one of those where it is, you know, it's not going to happen. Tottenham are going to stump up the same amount of money that Chelsea would. And, you know, it's one of those where they'll probably try for us Harry Winks on loan or something stupid like that. I very much expect Anthony Gordon to be a Chelsea player at the end of the window. Moving on to a report from Ed Ahrens that Everton are interested in Newcastle's Miguel Almiron. Newcastle will only let the winger leave on a permanent transfer. Another one where we ran a poll. 82% of fans said no. And again, I'm in that bracket of no. I don't think Miguel Almiron's a bad player. I think, you know, he's shown it against Man City. He had an impressive outing against them. But... I think he's on the same level of players like Damari Gray and other wingers we've got at the club. I don't really think uh, Dwight McNeil, I don't really think we need to bring in another winger of that quality, especially on a permanent deal. I think that's one of those where Everton just need to ignore that. But I do think it's one of those where we have a list of wingers we'd like to sign and Miguel Almiron is on that list. I don't, I wouldn't really expect us to push to sign Miguel Almiron, to be honest with you. But we are also preparing, and I believe have matched Newcastle's offer for Watford forward Yao Pedro. Uh, Pedro scored three goals, I believe, last time he was in the Premier League, but does look quite impressive. In the build-up, he's not really the biggest goal-scoring threat, but at the same time, he's good at build-up. He's a good dribbler. He's technically gifted. Very, He has a very similar profile to Richarlison, but I do think that's more because Brazilian signed straight out of Brazil to Watford. I think it's one of those where I believe Newcastle's offers around £25 million. Uh, for the age Pedro is, I think it'd be a decent signing, but as a, that's another one where I think there probably is better players out there. And I think if it depends if we're going to sign Pedro to play up front while Carver Lewin's out, I don't really feel that we're struggling to score goals as it is. If he's going to play on that wing, I'm not completely against that because I think he still offers more of a goal scoring threat than someone like McNeil and even someone like Demary Gray, to be honest with you. Then we move on then to Adrissa Gay wants to terminate his contract with PSG so he can move to Everton on a free transfer. Guy has already reached an agreement with Everton. That comes from RMC Sport via Sport Witness. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be fantastic. Move on a free. You know, it'd be that real steel in midfield that we need. A player who's played at the club knows the fans, know what it's like to perform at this club. You know, at this time, he was arguably one of the best defensive midfielders in the league. You know, so I think it, maybe I don't expect those levels to improve. No, I don't expect those levels at all, to be honest with you. But it'd be a nice player to bring in, offer that real midfield depth, a bit more steel in midfield to me the club are really needing and that is because Alan has been offered to Italian side Roma by Everton the Blues are trying to move the Brazilian on before the end of the window and he's available for less than 10 million euros that comes from let me read that cm.com underscore English I can imagine that's a Twitter account that if I have a little peek at but they are reporting that we are offering the midfielder to Roma I think it's one of those where Alan he's a bit if and He's, he's had these ebbs and flaws at Everton, you know, he's one of those where he has a, a point for like a really competent midfielder, a talented midfielder, someone who can really help in Everton's midfield. But it looks like in the direction we're going, Alan is 31-32 now, and if we are planning on bringing in a Drissa Gay in, then I can understand why Alan would be, you know, packed up and ready to go. I believe he's probably on some big wages as well when we signed him from Napoli. So I think it's one of those where, unfortunately, I think Alan's a good player, but I can also understand why this is... Happening, but then also another midfielder leaving the club. Turkish Shad Trabs on sport are ready to sign Everton midfielder Jean Philippe Gabamin to their squad. That comes from Eunice. Eunice, Re I'm not you. It comes from Eunice Semeral. I do apologize about that. My pronunciation can be awful sometimes. Yep, Gabamin never really worked out. Everton got injured as soon as he joined, got injured again. I think went out to CSK in Moscow. Looked like he was having a good stretch, did some stupid things, has done some stupid things back in England when it comes to driving, loves a party apparently. I think it's one of those where we just take our losses and move on from him. But yet again, this sums up why we may need someone like Garner or possibly even Gallagher in the squad. And also, Deli Ali is set to fly to Istanbul tonight to complete his loan move to Besiktas. Delhi, the Delhi's deal will include an option to buy in January and next summer. I believe from reports I've seen, it would be €6 million Euros in January and €8 million Euros if they signed him next summer. That comes from David Ornstein. I think that'd be some fantastic move from Everton. I think Delhi, 
unfortunately it hasn't worked out we're paying him 100 grand a week we took his Tottenham contract over that's a lot of money to get you know to get off our wage books similar with players like Alan who are leaving so I think it's one of those where I think it's something Everton should do unfortunately it hasn't worked out and I don't think Frank's really going to be giving Delhi the chances I don't think Frank thinks this is going to work out I think this would be the best move for Delhi to leave for a leave like league like Turkey which can really help boost his confidence but that is all the news for today is a lot of news coming into obviously towards the end of the deadline if you did enjoy please make sure to like and subscribe follow us on Twitter and follow me on Twitter at Callum Brandon free and I will see you all on the next video goodbye